All right, so what I want to do is take this a little bit further. If I duplicate this, what's going to happen is I'm going to start getting an orange kind of appeal. And I don't want that to happen. I just want it to get more and more dark. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is first save this. <laughs> oh, I can always go back to it. And then go into this RGB value and start looking at maybe, you know, a little less blue, a little less green. And if I get too much green, I get a darker version. If I get too light of green, you know, I get this hot type mess. So what I want is a little bit more green. about equal amounts of red and green, or green and red, see how they're, they're near perfect except for a 10% drop. And now I'm going to make this a little less blue than 2%. So I can't get any less, maybe a 1%. N in other words, blue, I would leave it out of the equation half the time because it's just it just makes it look bad. So um, now that with this new group out there, if I duplicate it, Wow, I get even more of a dark appeal to it. As you go up higher and higher, you're going to constantly adjust for the red and green. Okay? And it, it goes to a slight variation all the way up. So next time, the this should be like at 9, and this one's going to be 19. And I can keep going up, and then I'm going to have absolutely no blue whatsoever. You can only get so dark, however, before it starts looking fake. Another thing is, if you take this girl in the background and now kind of tone her down, you can get a better look because it's not r using this to ramp color. You want actually 50% of that. Now, another thing you could do here is grab these three groups and go layer, group. Hold command over the top of this so you get the march, marching ants and then go in here and do a layer. This layer mask is taking and blacking out everything on the outside except for her. That means if I take and click on this masked area and go in here with black, pure black, at with an airbrush and a low flow, what I can do is now paint her eyes back in. Scary, right? And there we go, the perfect tan. And again, I also have control over the opacity of it. So a lot of control here. And, you know, I can go from variations, several variations down, give it a real natural look, and I can go all the way back to the first skin color. Now, if we start thinking that way, when we go to pick out colors for a digital paint, it'll be a lot easier. Now you're not fumbling around all the time with skin because really, if you think about it, it's just the variation of red, blue, green. And if I start looking at randomly going around here and looking for skin tone, what I'm going to look is for that ratio. I'm going to look for the ratio of this, a 40% drop and another 40% drop, and then I'll get a near, a perfect, skin tone sometimes. And if I don't, well, I always have this picture and I can always go in here and just kind of rank this up and get a perfect skin tone based upon the color variations that I can do within this picture alone. All right, so I hope that helps. Um, what I want to do is give you a lesson on this. Uh, go on to the next video.